Welcome back to Core Cutting Today, where I break down some of the biggest stories happening in the past 24 hours. Except today, today is a bonus edition. I am traveling, so we're going to do a little retrospective on the current state of cord cutting in 2024. Now, often when I'm covering the news of the day, I touch on my opinions on some of the biggest issues, but I don't get a chance to just kind of dive into some of the things I want to talk about with the world of cord cutting, and that's what we're going to dive in today. The current state of cord cutting in 2024 and the current state of cable TV in 2024. Now, if you like this, I will put some links to maybe some interesting things down below that I think are relevant to this discussion, but check back every Monday through Friday. I break down the biggest news happening in the world of cord cutting. I do know I'm traveling today, so I pre-recorded this. And thank you for your support. Check back tomorrow for another cord cutting today, just like normal. With that said, though, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up if you're new here, it really does help. So what is cord cutting in 2024? Well, it's much like cord cutting has always been. There's still millions of people, more people than ever, canceling cable and moving to cord cutting. That raises the number one question. How soon until cable TV companies just completely shut down? We are already seeing that a growing number of cable TV companies over the last year have announced plans to shut down their TV service and go either streaming only or go and just get rid of TV altogether. Even Spectrum, the currently the largest seller of cable TV in the United States, jumping Comcast last year, um, is now only offering on our, a streaming service. They're not only offering, but they're pushing as their primary selling feature, their streaming only version, so I should say. Now, I think cable TV is far from dead. There are still millions of people who will happily pay a premium price for cable television just because so, they don't want to mess with it. It's what they grew up with, it's what they know. They're not going to try to learn something new. So I think we're years away from cable TV fully going away. Do I think we're much closer than we were a few years ago? Yes. I can say a day in five or so years when a vast majority of cable TV companies shut down their TV service and go internet and phone providers only. Though there are hundreds of cable TV providers in the United States, we usually just kind of focus on the few really big ones and we can ignore the fact that there are hundreds of small cable providers. Some are being sold, some are shutting down TV, um, some are trying to merge. But I think we'll see a day where maybe most cable TV companies no longer sell television in the next five to 10 years. I think that's a, kind of the window I'm looking at when we say most. The big ones will probably be the last. Comcast and Spectrum are still doing pretty well. Even though they're losing subscribers, I think we're far from them throwing in the towel. As long as it's still generating revenue, they're gonna to continue to offer cable television. But is cable TV a better deal? I kind of laugh when I hear that argument. Oh, you should just go back to cable television. Streaming is costing just as much because all oh, YouTube TV went up a few bucks. Well, the truth is cable televisions are going up their prices every year also. What we're finding is, yeah, while TV overall is becoming more expensive, the profit or the savings between the two stay about the same. Uh, YouTube TV raises price and several other services last year. DirecTV and Spectrum raised the prices twice last year. Many cable TV customers found their prices going up by $10 or more, um, where many cord cutters saw the prices go up about five bucks. What we are seeing though, is the number of cord cutters coming back on how many streaming services they have. Before 2020, the average cord cutter had three to four paid streaming services on average when you looked at all cord cutters during about 2021, when everything was going crazy, 2020 and 2021, when most people were stuck at home, that number creeped up to be closer to six. Well, now we're seeing that number fall, and in our most recent study, the vast majority of cord cutters say they pay for four or fewer streaming services for video products. I think that's an important issue. You know, that's the nice thing about cord cutting. With cable television, I'm locked into a long-term contract with streaming, Hey, I found, suddenly found myself trapped in the house for a long time. I will pay for some additional streaming. Uh, if you follow me, you know last year I had a, a shoulder surgery and I was uh, on rest for quite some time after that. Well, you better believe I watched a lot more television, made me willing for that one month to subscribe to some additional streaming services to catch up on some shows and movies that I've heard everybody talking about, but that I hadn't had time to watch. Once I was back up and going again, those subscriptions were canceled. And that will ultimately be the great thing about cord cutting, is the ability to always be able to rotate content. And that's why I have to ask you, are you rotating content? How many streaming services do you subscribe to? 
In our polls, still overwhelmingly, when we talk to new cord cutters, they overwhelmingly tell us they canceled cable TV because of the cost and they were able to save money by switching to streaming by a lot. And enough to make it worth the hassle and trouble to disconnect, return your equipment, and switch to streaming. Recent conversation with a UPS store employee told me that they get dozens of cable TV boxes back every day at that one single um, UPS store. And they, they said that over half of their business was returns between like Amazon and other places nowadays. And I think that trend's going to continue overall. Uh, increasingly overall, in 2024, uh, we see the future of um, streaming being online um, and uh, rotating of services. So that raises the final question. How much money do you save? And lastly, would you go back to cable if, even if you thought it was cheaper? I suspect most cord cutters would not for two reasons. Cable television overwhelmingly does not have the program streaming does. If I want to watch the new Star Wars content, I need Disney Plus. If I want the new Star Trek content, I need Paramount Plus. CBS won't be airing the new seasons of it. Sometimes they air older seasons, but not the newer ones. So we'll keep a very close eye on this. But overall, I find cord cutting in 2024 is much cheaper than it would be in 2025. Or then in uh, 2015, I apologize. So leave me a comment, let me know. I'd love to hear from you, but how much money are you saving? How many services are you subscribing to? Overall, I find core cutting is in a very good spot in 2024 with more options than ever and more coming. Really though, it really comes down to self-discipline. Are you, as a consumer, gonna be disciplined to only pay for services you're really going to use versus just paying for everything you could ever want? It's really no different than walking into a Walmart or Meijer or whatever grocery store you may have by you and going down the chip aisle. You want some chips, but do you want every bag of chips? Probably not. You're just going to get one or two that you like. That's the same thing with streaming. Well, that's it for today. I hope you have a fantastic day. We'll be back again tomorrow with another video. Appreciate your support as I travel. I'll be back again real soon with another video of core cutting today.